Yet there are some people who've already adapted to life in a water world. In the coral seas between Borneo, Sulawesi and the Philippines, there are people who live more intimately with the ocean than any other culture on Earth. The Bajau Laut build their lives in the middle of the sea, often many kilometers from land. The ocean has a profound influence on every aspect of their existence. They even measure the passage of time by the rhythm of the tides rather than minutes and hours. And there are some whose relationship with the sea runs even deeper. The Bajau, who live on houseboats, have almost completely severed their ties with the land. Nohara rarely sets foot ashore. Nohara and her family usually only visit land to trade for rice and fuel or to mend their boats. But like many Bajo, Nohara gets land sick and she prefers to stay aboard. Her family has no nationality, no fixed abode, and almost no money. But the ocean provides everything they need. They eat a bewildering variety of seafood. Her children adapt to an aquatic way of life from a very young age. Some Bajau children spend so much time in the sea, their eyes adjust to focus better underwater. But there's one member of this community whose adaptation is even more staggering. Sulbin is an underwater hunter and the living proof of just how far we can push our bodies towards a life aquatic. Bang aku tu hun makalalo man, insaniat tanam kuat pedi. Supaya niat tanam kuat pedi, baru Allah aku. Bang musaru, musaru. Asan nang marum tahik mariata. Sulbin's search for supper takes him on an incredible journey under the waves, and his abilities will take your breath away. First, he prepares by entering a trance-like state. Ya mga kwa tuhun na pareho eh. Ya na pasquinan, pataha. Pubote ako, jari anu na pasquin. Sulbin is about to push his body almost beyond the realms of possibility. And if you want to try and join him, get ready to hold your breath for as long as you can. He takes one last breath.
Focused and calm, Sulbin descends 20 meters to the sea floor. His heartbeat slows to around 30 beats per minute. The pressure at these depths crushes his chest, squeezing the air in his lungs to one third of its usual volume. Even without weights, he's negatively buoyant enough to stride across the bottom of the sea as if hunting on land. By now, the carbon dioxide in his blood causes an almost irresistible urge to gasp for air. But Solvin must keep his mind on the hunt. After a minute and three quarters, Solvin spots a fish. Solbin can go even deeper than this and stay down for up to five minutes. But he's not one to show off, and after all, he's got what he came for. Two and a half minutes of hunting under pressure on one breath. Perhaps the idea of humans existing as marine mammals is not so far-fetched after all. Through amazing adaptability and endeavor, we've pushed our limits of survival into the ocean. And as we've immersed ourselves deeper in the sea, it's had a profound effect on our lives. But as we continue to change the nature of the greatest environment on our planet, how we'll adapt in the future remains to be seen.